So before we go into detoxification processes, how to improve drainage, lymphatic drainage, especially, can you talk about that process for someone who's, who's not understanding, wait a second, is it taking my blood? What is it scanning in my arm? How does it do it? Can you take us through that? Because it is a computer system that's con connected to the spectrometry that, that reads into the tissue at certain points in the non-dominant hand, correct? Correct. So let's take apart the, you know, hair analysis. You probably excreted your, your that mineral um, three earlier, previously. So it may show it has zinc in it, but your body on the oligo scan will show lack of zinc. A blood test, we know that it, it says your magnesium levels are fine, but an oligo scan says you have low magnesium. And as we mentioned, when you, you have a, a urine analysis, you have to provoke it, but you're asking for one element, but you don't know how it intertwines with the other elements. Because when you, when you are looking and you're working with, a, um, with an individual, you want to guide them on how to improve because they're self-managing themselves. This is something that they can't say, doctor, save me. You're telling them, go home and, and you know, this is, this is your report card. And, and so if somebody's low on zinc and it's in the office, I tell them, we can't do anything until we get your zinc up. And that, that is a big issue. Uh, and one of the, the better issues I find with a leg scan. The other one is that we're not taking blood. We're not taking hair. We're not taking anything out of circulation. The Olympic scan allows the uh, observing the what's being retained in the body. So you're not disturbing the circulation. Mm -hmm. So in other words, once you pull blood or you pull hair, you've lost some valuable information. Right. And um, and and so examining all those, you start to see the changes in the body and everything starts to change when you start to, to uh, intervene. And so that's why I tell people, you need to at least get a baseline and see if one, your amalgams may be exposing you to heavy metals, mercury and cadmium. Um, there's 500 different combinations of metals they make out of amalgams. Um, Nicholas Myers uh, is brilliant when he wrote his book on amalgams. and and I worked with Hal Huggins, and they um, eighty to ninety percent of uh, I could say breast cancer is probably related to uh, dental materials being exposed to dental materials in, in females. Yeah, no, it's a wild stat. I've seen that before, and and you know what we do in dentistry as a whole with between the fluoride, the root canals, and of course the mercury amalgams, which. Finally, I think it looks like the ADA is starting to step away from that and change, but still not admitting that it was really wrong to, to do that for all those years and fill someone with such a potent heavy metal neurotoxin. But it seems that at least that's, that's changing.